Hi guys. Hi guys. Hey folks, I'm Tina Hui with Follow the Coin and we're here at the CES 2015 Consumer Electronics Show. This is the International CES, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and this is of course Tony Galipi of right. BitPay. So, Tony, yeah. tell me what is BitPay for folks that don't know? So BitPay is actually one of the oldest Bitcoin companies that's still around. We were started in early 2011 and it was just two of us at the time. But, uh, you know, we were both active in Bitcoin in the forums back then and we came up with an idea for a Bitcoin business. We said, you know, it's it's kind of a no brainer for businesses. It's going to be lower cost and lower risk for a business to accept Bitcoin as a payment as opposed to credit cards or cash or really anything else. Not only that, but they could take a payment from anywhere in the world. So for any business, like why wouldn't they want to do this? Right. Um, the challenge was they couldn't. They didn't have the tools for it because it doesn't work anything like credit cards or PayPal. So none of their existing software could help them accept Bitcoin payments. So that's where we really quickly realized that there's an opportunity here to build the software and build a payment gateway for businesses to be able to take Bitcoin. So we started in early 2011. This is actually our fourth CES. We've been here four years in a row. I know, I heard um, that. And this is, of course, by far the, the biggest turnout we've ever had. This is a huge booth. I mean, how big is the booth? What what has been the reaction of folks? You know, let, tell us everything. Yeah, well, you know, just to give you an idea, last year we had a 20 by 20 booth and there were three Bitcoin companies here. Now we've got a 40 by 50 booth. It's 2,000 square feet. It's as big as a house. And there's 10 Bitcoin companies here. So we've got wallets, we've got exchanges, we've got venture capital, we've got, of course, BitPay. Uh, we've got miners, we've got media. There's lots of parts of the Bitcoin ecosystem here on display. And so lots of people are coming to the show and they've heard about Bitcoin, they're curious, we can answer their questions. But usually they're probably interested in, in one of these aspects more than any other. So all of us understand, you know, let's make sure that the person coming into the booth really talks to the company that they should be talking to. Right, and then have you had a bunch of folks that don't know much about Bitcoin come and ask you guys about Bitcoin? What has yeah. that reception been like? Yeah, I mean, I, it's surprising that a lot of people have actually heard about Bitcoin. It, a couple of years ago, people were like, okay, what is, is what it is Is it surprising they really, I mean, you just did Bitcoin Bowl. <laughs> yeah, which raised awareness huge. So I think by now, most people have heard about Bitcoin, but still we're only at a point where maybe 1% of the people in the US have actually used it. We'd like to grow that. Right. And, and you can only grow it by, you know, educating people and they've got to hear it multiple times. They're not just going to jump on it the first time they hear it. So, you know, more reinforcement and more news and more developments, you know, new apps, new companies, new ways to get consumers engaged, you know, tipping, working online with Twitter, like anything you can do to, to make it easier for people and reach, you know, a new type of user that maybe heard about it before, was curious, but didn't have the time or effort to figure it out. But now they're like, okay, I'm, I'm ready to try it now. So it's exciting. I mean, how was Bitcoin Bowl? You're all about it. The Bitcoin Bowl was amazing. You know, we're, we're of course fans of college football. And, you know, we knew going into it that it was going to be in a good time spot for television. We knew it would be a primetime game. Uh, but I don't think we anticipated the excitement around the game. Right. Um, you know, it, it was it had almost four times the viewership on TV than the, the same game last year. Yeah, wasn't it prime time? It was like the, it broke a record for prime time views or something. Uh, well, it, it didn't break any records, but at that time slot on TV, it was the highest rated show. So Amazing. at that time, that Friday night, more people watched the Bitcoin Bowl on ESPN than any other show at that time. Do you think it's because all the Bitcoin people were watching? You know, it's interesting because <laughs> normally with with when any time you have a sports event, you have the two teams always have their fans at the event. And of course we had that at the Bitcoin Bowl, but with Bitcoin we had the third dynamic, we had all the Bitcoin people from all over the world also watching it. Right. And you typically don't get that with any other sponsor. You're not gonna get it with you know many of the other uh, you know events in, in college bowl games that went on. So certainly the Bitcoin community added to the viewership, certainly the, the international viewership, as well as the attendance of the game. Um, so it was great, I mean, you know, we were there at the very beginning. Um, I'm not sure if they showed this on TV, but right before the game, they had Army Rangers rappel down from the ceiling. No way! And they delivered the game ball. Yeah. We'll and they out. also delivered, let me see if I have it. <laughs> the key to the city. Okay. No, they <laughs> delivered the, the, the game coin. And I don't know if you can see this. What is that? Oh, well, so, maybe. well, what this is, this is actually the official game coin. So every game, like the referee, you know, flips a coin at the beginning of the game oh. to determine who goes first. Well, what? we. What's it doing here? <laughs> so we asked ESPN, we said, you know, in the Bitcoin community, there's a person named Cassatius who makes physical Bitcoins, and he's kind of a legend. I said, would it be cool if we could actually make a Cassatius coin to flip at the beginning of the game? And they said, well, let's find out. So it got approved by ESPN and the NCAA. They said, yeah, we can do that. So we had Mike Cassatius actually make 
this coin. And so the Hez is a, is a B. It looks like the normal uh, Cassatius front coin that we're all familiar with. But then on the back is the Bitcoin Bowl logo. Oh, amazing. Um, so the referee at the beginning of the game showed the both teams, you know, this is Heads, this is Tails. You know, one team calls it. You know, the coin lands on the ground, and that's what started the game. Uh, so it's kind of cool to see, like, different pieces of Bitcoin history, like, make it into this event. Well, that's a piece of Bitcoin history. Yeah. And you're just carrying it in your pocket. No big deal. Yeah. There's only one in the world, but I'll carry it in my pocket. Yeah, well, this is, <laughs> there. there's more than one. Uh, oh, Mike, there's more than one? Mike actually made 2,000 of them. It's the only coin he made this year. Well, you're, um, you had the one that touched the yeah. propellers and all of that. <laughs> yeah, and I'm going to keep it very safe. <laughs> <laughs> so how much do you think that's worth? Oh, I don't know. Now it's uh, priceless. I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you guys at BitPay are doing a phenomenal job because, you know, you're here at CES, you could have called it BitPay World, and you guys didn't do that. You always call it uh, mm -hmm. Bitcoin World, Bitcoin Bowl. You guys are doing an amazing job for the ecosystem. Yeah. Because um, you're always giant evangelist of Bitcoin as a whole. And yeah. I also know that you guys have a giant suite of, you know, apps for developers and merchant services and all of that. Mm -hmm. Can you speak to what those are for folks that may not be familiar with Bitcoin? Yeah, so our primary business, of course, is for merchants, right? Businesses that want to accept Bitcoin as a form of payment, we have all the tools that they could need. Uh, whether they're an e-commerce retailer, they sell stuff online, uh, they could be a brick and mortar store, they could be a restaurant, uh, they could be like an accountant or a lawyer that sends out bills by email, right? We have tools for all those. Um, so that's kind of where we want to specialize. And, and when we look at the Bitcoin ecosystem today, there are so many opportunities and so many startups. We think that the companies that will ultimately succeed are the ones that specialize. Right. Specialize in doing one thing really well, do it hands down better than anybody else, um, and you can build a successful company. Uh, I think that's going to be a winning strategy as opposed to a company trying to do everything. Interesting. Um, and so w when we're here, you know, we have an opportunity to showcase other parts of the ecosystem. And we can show the wallets, we can show the exchanges. Uh, you know, these guys obviously build their product better than, than anybody else, right? That, that's, why they're, that's why they're the leaders. And so, you know, it gives an opportunity for companies to collaborate uh, and specialize, and it, it creates better efficiencies, right? There's no need for all of us to reinvent the wheel. Um, we can do our part. Now, we have to make sure that our system, whether we're on a website or whether we're in a store, that we're compatible, that if somebody with Bitcoins has a wallet, that they can pay. Right. And so we need to make sure that we're compatible with wallets and wallets are compatible with us. So Bitcoin offers a standard interface and anybody that designs that interface, your products are automatically going to work together just as if they were designed from the same company. So there's lots of opportunities to collaborate on some more innovative stuff, but just out of the box, if companies design to the standard Bitcoin interfaces, we, we all work together out of the box. It's fantastic what yeah. you guys are doing. Um, you know, everybody should check out BitPay. Yeah. So I guess, so any big news coming out of BitPay here at CS or like in the future soon? Well, you know, it, you may know less than a month ago, actually, we launched a partnership with Microsoft. So ah, Microsoft yes. started accepting Bitcoin. They're the biggest company in the world to start using Bitcoin, you know, by, by far. And uh, they want to do more with Bitcoin. So one of the first questions that they asked us as we were starting to, to do some payments with them, they said, well, you know, are there any Bitcoin wallets that work on Windows Phone? We said... I don't know, let's go check. We looked around, there weren't any. Yeah, no, there wasn't any. There wasn't any. So we said, look, you know, we are working on kind of a beta multi-sig app. It's still in beta, it's not ready yet, but we have a, a demo app out there for Android and iOS. So we asked our developers, what would it take to make a demo version of this app that worked on Windows Phone? And they said, well, give us a couple weeks. So uh, that is what we're announcing today. It's now available. Windows has a Windows Phone app store. Is that today? That's today. Hey, look at that. We're breaking news. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you can you can go into the Windows Phone app store and download Copay. Nice. Um, if you can't find it, you can just go to copay.io and just click on the Windows download. Uh, but yeah, you can have it on your phone and, and start playing around with it. So now you've got a fully functioning wallet. It supports payment protocol, multi-sig, HD wallets, all the fancy Bitcoin techie stuff. Right. Um, but uh, you know, we're, it's now available for the people who use Windows. Congratulations. Thanks. You should do a high five. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, and I also know you could play Xbox with Bitcoin. Yeah, so you can, you can top up your Xbox account with Bitcoin. And that happened, you know, of course, in the beginning of December. And then if you saw around Christmas time, you know, Xbox was one of the companies that released the interview uh, on uh, Xbox video. So right. you could actually buy the interview with Bitcoin. Right. Through Xbox. No, I heard really great things about the Bitcoin Bowl. I think you're doing great. I'm actually curious, who's this? 
This is Curly. Um, so Curly is a toy and we like to give him away, but he's actually a toy representation of my dog, who's oh, a kind of our company mascot. That's so great. He comes into the office and everybody loves him. We um, have a company mascot that's a dog too. You my do. dog no no. Okay. No no the dog. Well maybe we should get Nono and Curly to play together sometime. Oh my god, we have to. Yeah. Does he have a Twitter account, Curly? Curly does. What is it? It's at Meet Curly. <laughs> I love it. You can go meet Curly. <laughs> I yeah. I want one of these made of no no. People take note. I need bitcoins to do this. Okay. This but he's amazing. nice and soft and fluffy and uh, you I'm, know I'm parents like him, him give him away to their kids. That's fantastic. Yeah. And then you guys had like a giant mascot walking around too, right? <laughs> yeah, so we also have a life-size uh, mascot. We had him for the Bitcoin Bowl and he was great to entertain the crowd. Right. So. Uh, that was, it's great. I think yeah. you guys are doing awesome work. Thanks for setting up this entire booth. What are you guys going to do with the banner? Uh, well, I don't know. We can reuse it when we want to do a show again, but this is like a 32-foot banner. Yeah, how do you get foot this down. home? Uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> Good luck with that. <laughs> it would be fun. Guys. Uh, we'd like to hang it from the ceiling in our office. That would be fun. But, that would uh, be amazing. You no, know, it's great because you know you walk down the aisle from the for as soon as you walk down the hallway and you can see this giant Bitcoin. So you know that this is the world of Bitcoin and you know all of the individual companies here. You know we're kind of in our small areas, but this kind of showcases the the size of, of what we're trying to show here with the whole ecosystem. I love it. I'm I'm so curious to see how many folks are gonna like interact with the booth. And you guys have to tell us. I mean, how's that been? Has yeah. there been a lot of inquiry? Have you been asked what is a Bitcoin over and over and over again? You know, I, I think we're a little bit beyond that. You know, a couple of years ago, we were getting that question over and over again. And the average conversation we would have would be 15 minutes. Now people are, are past that. Um, it's interesting. We were here at the show last year and uh, it was at this show that we met the guys from Newegg. Uh, which ended up becoming a customer hey, of ours. You guys are killing it with this dev. Aww. I mean, it's amazing. It's every, every other time I'm reporting something. It's BitPay is now work, you know, making it possible for Microsoft to be accepting Bitcoin. And all yeah, I mean, they were they were pretty uh, strict in in terms of the requirements that they had. You know, um, you know, companies that work with Microsoft have to meet a lot of criteria, not just you know the way your product works, but the way your company functions. Um, and so. Uh, you guys was, are all very um, compliant and everything, so. Yeah, so there was quite a bit of due diligence that they did on us. Uh, they didn't just sign up and start using it, right? There was, there was quite a bit of work. Um, but, you know, they're, they're very excited and they've already had other groups within Microsoft reach out to us and say, hey, we want to look at Bitcoin too, you know, wow. not just the Xbox group. So uh, we'll That's see where it goes. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Check that out. So, um, you know, what has been the evolution since you've been here four years with Bitcoin? Like, yeah. How have you seen things change? Is it like, you know, tell, tell us everything. Like with folks, when you talk to them about Bitcoin, yep. people are excited, less skeptical, and you know, what's it yeah. been like during those four years? Yeah, so it's funny. The first year we're he we were here would be January of 2012. And the year before, 2011, is when Bitcoin went from $1 up to $30 and then back down to two. Wow. And I yeah. think it was in November of 2011 that Wired magazine came out with an article saying Bitcoin is dead. And a You're month like, later, a month later, here we are at CES. And so we did have some people come into our booth and they said, why are you here? Wired said you guys were dead. <laughs> hey, thanks we're for like, being so nice, dude. <laughs> yeah, we're thanks. Um, I think the price of Bitcoin at that point was like six or seven dollars. So it had rebounded a little bit from two. Um, and we've seen it grow, of course, over the years. You know, last year we were here, it was kind of in the middle of the, the cycle. So. In the four years, it was seven dollars. Then it was thirteen dollars. Last year, it was like seven hundred, and now it's you know around three hundred dollars. So we've seen quite a bit of ups and downs, but um, you know just the the overall activity, the knowledge that people have coming into the booth of Bitcoin is certainly more advanced than it was. Um, the types of questions they're asking are more intelligent. They understand how it works. Now they're asking, well, you know, can you help me use it? I have this idea. You know, how could I use Bitcoin for this? Um, and so we've seen some pretty interesting ideas come by and some interesting projects to work on. So what is the project and idea you're more, most excited about in 2014, uh, 2015? Right? 2015. Well, you know, I think the whole, you know, micropayments and social media is going to be really interesting. Um, you're going to start to, you know, let people use Bitcoin without realizing that they're using it, right? They're passing each other donuts and beers and, and, and dollars. Um, and that's interesting. And, and it's a way to kind of keep people engaged, um, you know, reward them for producing good content. Uh, if I create something and somebody likes it, gee, that's nice, but what does a like do for me? What do 10 right. likes do for me? It doesn't really do much. Um, if people actually tip me a dollar or two at a time, that's going to reward me and it's going to reward other people for producing quality original content. Right. Um, and we need more of that. We're on giant the fans of that, obviously. Yeah, <laughs> of course. And so, Big uh, content making machine. We're like, yes, yeah. please tip us. <laughs> yes. 
Uh, so <laughs> you'll, you'll start to see people that can get really creative and I think you're gonna start to see a lot of more creative uh, videos being produced, blogs being produced, and they'll be rewarded through, through tips. And some people will be able to make a pretty decent living. They can do it while they're in school. Uh, even kids, right? A group of school kids could create a blog. Oh, talk about, oh, we're doing this project. You know, could you tip us? And uh, you know, they can receive tips from all over the world. You know, a small uh, school in Africa could put up a blog and say, hey, we want to do this project, you know, to clean up the water in our village. And they could earn tips, you know, for documenting and maybe making a little video story of what they do. They can use that money to enhance their website, do the next project. That's awesome. uh, yeah. Bitcoin is, is incredible in, in the opportunities that it can bring. And the fact that somebody in India could tip a kid in Africa a quarter for producing a, a cool story, we've never had that kind of capability no, before. Never. And it's amazing. Uh, you know, I think by the end of this year, you're going to start to see an explosion of these micropayments use cases. Pay attention, folks. <laughs> I mean, Tony says it's going to yep. be a really great year for Bitcoin, I think. So. Yep, I yeah. think so too. Yeah. Oh, I was going to ask you what a wallet is for folks who don't know what a wallet is. What is a Bitcoin wallet? Yes. Well, a Bitcoin wallet is a place where you hold your Bitcoins. Uh, for most people, it's just going to be an app on your phone, right? You download it from the App Store, whether it's Google, Microsoft, Apple, um, and that is how the average person is going to interact with their Bitcoins. If you're a real uh, power user, you're going to do more secure stuff, but the average everyday user is going to probably use an app on their phone, and Bitcoin wallets are great for that. Thank you for that explanation. Mm -hmm. I know we haven't actually gone over what's a wallet, and that's you have all these questions from Bitcoin, right? Like, what's a blockchain? What's a Bitcoin? Bitcoin. That's the number one question. It's like, yeah. man, all of us know it's going to be a 15-minute yeah. discussion. Yeah, and you know, and th this is still a perception that people have. They think bitcoins because it uses the word coin is like some kind of discrete thing. Like, how much is a bitcoin? Oh, three hundred dollars. You mean I have to buy a whole one? They don't understand that you can buy a dollar's worth of bitcoin and right. five dollars worth of bitcoin. It's another currency, just like euros or, or pounds. That took me four months to figure out. Yeah, I and mean, it's, it's, come on. <laughs> it's still a misconception. So it would be good to be able to educate people, and maybe if we move to bits. Uh, that could be a unit that, well, you can, for a dollar, you get 5,000 bits or whatever it is. I'm not even sure Which if is that's a, accurate. A but, lot, um, but yeah, yeah. so yeah, I think you're going to start to see, um, you know, a shift to bits is going to make Bitcoin a little bit less, seem less expensive. Right. And, and diff seem, like, yeah, and difficult. And difficult. Um, yeah. You mean like I have to buy them in, in $300 chunks? I, 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 I may not want to do that. Right. Or 1200 back in November. Yeah. Gee, I can't afford $1,200 <laughs> for a whole Bitcoin. I, that's what I was I mean, thinking. I was like, wait. How, I'd how like to you, have a You're like, people were like, oh, you could buy 20 bucks worth of Bitcoin. I'm like, and I'll own like. like point zero zero. <laughs> like that, does, that doesn't get me excited. Wait, what? <laughs> and then now I'm like, oh. Oh, well, I can get like a thousand bits. Okay, well, that's kind of cool. What can I use bits for? Well, you can buy, you know, you can buy stuff online. And, and as you start to see more digital content, songs, music, movies, you know, you're going to start to see stuff online priced under a dollar. Right. And Bitcoin can enable that, and by using bits through tipping or whatever, you'll be able to actually buy a whole lot of stuff for under a dollar and, and be happy with it. Yeah, change tips. Um, I mean, they're already bidding, so it's bitting. Oh, yeah. made a verb. But um, yeah. yeah, it'll be. It's gonna be a fun time. I think so. And it's great to finally catch up with you, Tony. Thank you. you. Know, we're a big fans of BitPay, so. Well, and good. now I'm a huge fan of Curly. Yeah. I'm gonna go meet Curly on Twitter. So yeah. thank you so much for the interview. And, Thanks. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Bye guys. Bye guys.